one inch soil test. You know, if you just can't get enough doing a six inch core or a zero to 24 <laughs> inch sample, do every single inch all the way down. Now this one takes a little bit of time. When you think about it, if you want to send <laughs> well, in, should. you know, if you want to send in a quart or a couple quarts of soil and you need to get that all from the three inch soil layer, well, you've got to clear a pretty good area <laughs> in a number of spots to take a few different cores and get that much soil. So it's a lot of work. It costs a little money, but if you do it one time ever on your farm, you'll learn a big lesson. Okay, and here's what that lesson is. Nutrient stratification. Now we've talked about this for years on Ag PhD, but we didn't have the actual data to show you how dramatic that stratification becomes. So what we did is, even on our own farm here, we took a couple of fields, one where we had been doing strip till for many years, one where we had been doing conventional till. And by the way, a lot of people ask us, well, what do you like better, strip till or conventional till? I just tell them, look, you can make about any tillage practice work as long as you manage it properly. So I'm not that worried about the tillage practice. Yes, there's some things I like about strip till. There are some things I like about conventional till. We can talk about that another day. But the main thing is, I just want you to understand, we pulled samples from each of these couple of fields, and then we also had a no-tiller who was just a few miles away from here and we pulled samples out of his field and let's talk about the results on each of these different fields. Well first of all let's look at the conventional till field and we'll show some of these results for you. We aren't going to talk specifically about the actual numbers but what I would say to focus on is this. With conventional till the top two or three inches of soil have a tremendous amount of fertility and then once you get below that we're short on almost everything. Well, okay. All our fertilizers up in the All top right. few inches. Yep. And let's step this back a little bit. I want to go to the no-till first where almost all the nutrients, almost all the P and K is in the top two inches. Everything below that and almost nothing. With conventional till, it's in the top maybe three inches and it goes down a little less dramatically than what it does in no-till. We've got higher levels of nutrients at the three inch level, the four inch level, the five inch level, the six inch level than we do in no-till. And this no-till has been in no-till for maybe 10 years. So yep. it's been in there for quite a while, not 30 or 40 years, but 10 years is a pretty good period of time. Okay, then we get to the strip till ground and take a look at what happened here. We've got similar nutrient levels to the no-till in the top inch or two, and then it kind of drops off a little bit like it does in conventional till where it drops off at four inches, five inches. But when we've been putting this strip till band down at seven to 10 inches deep, depending on the year and who's running the equipment, the organic matter levels are higher in that seven to 10 inch range than they are even in the three or four inch range in the strip till. Why is that? Well, when we have fertility, we're going to have a proliferation of roots in that zone. Now, some people think, well, roots are going to grow to the fertilizer. No, roots are going to grow looking for food and looking for water in the soil. But when they find that fertilizer, they're really going to spread out and try and get all the food that they can get. So you'll see a big proliferation of roots right through that zone where we're leaving that strip till of fertilizer. It's the same thing that you see in conventional till and no-till. It looks like you've got a tremendous root system because in the top few inches, there's all kinds of roots up there. The problem is in the summer when it gets dry, those top few inches of soil are the first place that your soil profile dries out, and now we don't have any moisture there for those roots to be able to extract and nutrients. And that right there is the main reason why we did this whole project this last fall. Because during this winter, we've been talking to farmers all over the country about how can I drought proof my crop? And everybody says, well, I have some moisture as I go a little deeper. Yep, you probably do have some moisture as you go a little deeper in the ground, but how many nutrients do you have down there? It's great to get water into the plant, but wouldn't it be nice to get food into that plant as well? If you can do that, you have now, you're never going to drought proof your crop, but you made it much more drought tolerant. All right, Brian, well, that's all nice to say, but now we've got a neighbor that's extremely concerned. He's liked his no-till. He likes not <laughs> doing the tillage. He likes what it's doing yep. to soil tilth in the top few inches of soil, especially. But now he's wondering, well, man, what do I do with my fertilizer? How do I get fertilizer down deep? Yeah, and you know, this is the number one reason why we moved away from no-till years ago. People talk about the ground warming up and everything else. And yes, I wanted to have the ground a little warmer, but what I was a lot more concerned about was this nutrient stratification thing. You have to find a way to get nutrients down deep deeper in the soil. So my suggestion is to do strip till and you don't even have to necessarily plant right over the strip if you want to. I mean, you'll get the most bang for your buck that way, but somehow deep inject nutrients. So whether it's with a strip till machine or just some other type of shank machine to deep inject fertilizer, that's the way to go in my opinion. Well, in a conventional till, we kind of look at the same thing. If you're just running across your ground, stirring up the top, four or maybe six inches, usually what happens is broadcast fertilizer applications on top of the ground, a majority of that will move down, 
half the depth of your tillage. So if you're digging in at say six inches deep and you say, man, I'm doing a great job managing my residue and getting that fertilizer covered up if I'm tilling at six inches, that's nice, but just keep in mind, most of your fertilizer, if not all of it, is in the top three inches of soil now. So you really haven't done anything to overcome this nutrient stratification. Yep. So that's why a lot of people are going to things like deep ripping and they're using parabolic shanks and they're spinning the ground. They're using plows again, and things you, like and that. And you don't to get have to do it every deeper. year. If you did it just once every few years, you could kind of stir things up and get, them, get it moving. You could, but here's one of the challenges with that. Let's say you only have eight inches of topsoil and now you're running down at 14 inches with some type of deep tillage and you're taking that subsoil and bringing it up to the top. Well, that is not necessarily good. You can build topsoil over time and you can make that subsoil good over time, but over time are the key words there. So when you start bringing up subsoil, I mean, almost immediately, you're gonna have a little bit lower yield and that's not necessarily good. Well, I like how you try and be kind here, Brian, and say, well, it's, it's not necessarily good. Well, not necessarily good means bad. And bad is not a good thing for your crop this year because you're trying to make money this year, but you're also trying to do things right for the long term. So if you want to build that subsoil up and try and make more topsoil and make topsoil deeper in your soil, what you need to do is do some deep injecting. Now we've done that just with commercial fertilizer applications. We've also done that with manure. And really deep injecting manure is probably the best thing I can think of for building that soil up for the long term. Yep, so in other words, we're fine if you want to stir your soil up, but if you have shallow topsoil, stirring the soil up from down deep where the subsoil is, that's not good. So you've got to pay attention to how much topsoil you have and if you want to really stir that ground up or not. And there are certainly other things that go into that in terms of fuel consumption and in terms of you're not going to have a base for your soil. You could sink in if you have a wet spring, a lot of things for you to think about. But our whole point with this is we suggest that sometime on your farm, take some one inch soil tests like we did, and then you'll find out how you're doing in terms of nutrient stratification. And I'd be willing to bet you if you're doing just minimum tillage or if you're doing no-till, you're gonna find most of your nutrients in the top one to two inches of your soil. Well, the problem, Brian, too, when your fertility is all in that top inch or two of soil, that's where all the weeds are germinating at. Weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 